Go ahead, whenever you're ready. All right. Good morning, afternoon, evening, everyone, whatever time you end up watching this video. Welcome to the course on requirements engineering. My name is Birgit Penzenstadler, and today I will give you a little overview of what the content of the semester's course is going to be. So let me start with writing down that title, Requirements Engineering. You probably have that somewhere on the website that you're looking at. However, one of the most important things in requirements engineering is becoming clear about the terminology that you use in a certain context. So the first thing I would like to explain is what requirements engineering is. It has two parts, requirements and engineering. It's the early part of software engineering, software design. So in software engineering in general, we start eliciting the requirements from the stakeholder. We then move on into software design and then we implement and code, and then we test, integrate, and eventually deploy. And then we'll have to maintain for a long time, potentially. And you can see by the gesture that that usually takes more effort than you would initially think. One of the reasons why it often takes more effort than you would initially think is because people didn't do a proper job in requirements engineering, which will never happen to you because you're learning it right now. So. Requirements are what people want in a software system or in a software intensive system or actually in any kind of system. So what you learn in this course is potentially going to be useful for all sorts of areas in your life. Second, it includes wishes that they may have that they are not aware of yet. Third, it includes what they actually need but they may not know what they actually need. They're stuck with some of the wish wishes and some of the things they think the software system should be able to do. And the last one is constraints. So constraints that your technical environment brings, constraints that any other software system brings that your system will have to be integrated with, and constraints by the operating environment where your system is later on going to run. For example, a certain connectivity to the cloud. That's for the requirements part. For the engineering part, engineering in general says we try to do things according to a certain systematic. We try to follow some good practices. We will have some guidelines. We will have some frameworks. We will have some rules. And we will have some best practices that have developed over experience in many years. So even though we cannot formally prove why that is a good thing to do, the last 25 years it seemed to be working pretty well, so that's what we'll do before we try something else. So this taken together is what will be the overall topic of the course. And your particular learning goals will be developing those requirements First of all, that means finding out what those requirements are. So that means, in another term, elicit, eliciting them. This is also very typical for requirements engineering. We usually have a bunch of synonym things that almost mean the same thing, but not quite. So sometimes we have to differentiate, and sometimes we say, well, yeah, it's kind of synonym. It's pretty much the same. For example, quality requirements and non-functional requirements. Some of you may have heard that term before. It is pretty close. Non-functional classifies anything that is not concerned with a particular feature in a system. A quality requirement is a subcategory of that. That talks about the performance of a system, the robustness, the reliability. But that is a subchapter we'll talk about later. Back to the learning goals. So we're going to develop requirements. We're going to learn a number of techniques of how to do that. We can do that in the form of natural language requirements. And we can do that in the form of modeled requirements. And modeled or model-based requirements, that can be some form of graphs, some form of formulas. 
and some form of code or pseudocode. Many of these graphs you may be familiar with. Some of those are UML diagrams. For example, UML diagrams. Formulas are more mathematical representation, which means they're very precise, but they can also grow really complex and really complicated. So this is what we often use when there is a high security or safety relevance of our system. Then we want to know, we want to be able to prove that a certain requirement fulfills something, and that's why we want to be able to verify it mathematically. And then code is if we go into rapid prototyping, if we want to find out what a customer really needs, or if we have to try a couple of things out to know whether they can even work, then we'll use code. Either pseudocode or early prototype. For the graphs here and for the natural language requirements, this is where we'll spend a good part of this course. We call working with a lot of graphs and that in combination with natural language requirements that fit these graphs, we call that artifact-based requirements engineering. Let me write that one down. What's an artifact? It's not like the thing that they found in Indiana Jones, but it means any type of documentation, any type of notation that would write down some customer requirements, any type of a code piece, or even any PowerPoint slide where some CEO of a company said, this is what we envision in the future. That may be relevant to the system you're developing for them. So that can include goals, that can include other stakeholders, and that can be information about constraints. And we will talk about what each of these three are in more detail over the next few lessons. Now, apart from learning several methods on how to develop these types of requirements, and apart from learning these concepts in detail and how we can represent them, the most important part about requirements engineering is communication. So the requirements engineer is kind of the communication gateway between the stakeholders, who are all the people who we should care about to talk to for a specific system under development. And on the other side of that communication, communication gateway are the software developers, your designers, your quality assurance people, your testers, everything and everybody who helps get that system on the market. And the requirements engineer needs to be able to translate in between the stakeholders over here who don't necessarily have a lot of technical knowledge and the very technical people back here. So we need to be able to speak both languages and we need to be able to translate what the non-technical non people say into what the technical people can easily understand. And we need to be able to translate proposals of the technical people to the non-technical people so they can sign off on a specific set of requirements or a proposal to their solution. So this is a very generic, generic idea of what requirements engineering is and what we'll be dealing with this semester. We'll learn how to do requirements, how to elicit and find them, how to write them down, how to document them, and then also how to prove them and how to communicate them to the stakeholders.